Do you want to make over $100,000? That is life-changing money, huh? Contact CJ Noel at 239-404-9649 to obtain your insurance license. Mention No Cupcake Zone. You are now listening to the No Cupcake Zone podcast, sponsored by CJ Noel Insurance Services, where you can find all your financial and insurance solutions. For more information, please contact cjnoelinsurance.com or call 239-403-8391. Make sure to also visit NoCupcakeZone.com for future and past shows. Enjoy the show. Check, 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 check. What they do with the business here? Turn up. Make this one for my hood. 100 million trees. I made this for the projects, you know that I love them babies, you know I love them the dresses, you know they driving me crazy, I'm all in with my, my bad if I hurt some feelings, they'll never trust me again, if every first time I'm kill them, kill them, kill them. This one for the hood, this one for my hood, hit them, check it, this one for the hood, this one for my hood, hit them, check it, this one for the hood. The clouds are kind of dark. The weatherman said it's a real chance of some rain. This one for the hood. This one for my hood. Hit them. Check it. My hood. Hit them. Check it. My hood. Hit them. I know that hit them. Be flying. Man, I can't be around this rain because this is about the thunderstorm. You know, man, I got to jump in the ride, man. I might go to North Florida, man. I'm going to take a ride, bro. Oh, no, man. Let me get in the helicopter. The helicopter. You know, hey, over to Gainesville, you know, fly over the fields with the bat shit growing that Gainesville green, getting high. But uh, I don't do that. But I'm almost, I don't smoke. But I smoke. Ha! Feel like I'm Tony Montana. I remember me and the nappy trapping on Tropicana. Done took some bricks up the Alabama. Hey, we trapping on Tropicana. I remember we were trapping on Tropicana. G double G. You already know what it is. River Park stand up. BC stand. No, no. Big Baron call you. Sit the fuck down. Hey, the thunderstorm, man. We about the thunderstorm on the house. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make it flood warning. I hope you got some insurance. You better call CJ Noel for flood insurance because the rain man is in a building. You already know what it is. Gainesville, stand up. Dapadon hit the club, my club hit us. Want me some Pinoche. Cuba chick, I just met her. We skipping the full play. They know my name in the projects from 5 to 55. I see the Hey, mommy, slide, slide those panties to the side. Ha! It's your boy, you No Cupcake Zone. It goes. Street they been waiting on me to come through and tear it up. And I ain't gonna lie, girl, you so fine. I just wanna tear it up. I'm back in my zone. Hey, it's man, we in the trap right now. It's your boy, Triple B-L-A-C-K, a.k.a. the number one stunner, a.k.a. the boss, a.k.a. Abraham Lincoln, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama. All black presidents, bitch. You already know what it is, man. This is no cupcake zone podcast. <laughs> I do it for two, three, nine, the number one podcast in Southwest Florida. No question. You already know what it is, man. Hey, bust some shots, man. Rain man in the building, man. Get out your fucking coach right now because it's fine. Hey, my swagger is on a hundred right now, man. Shout out to Francione Johnson Marseille, my child, my love. You already know what it is, man. Shout out to Audrey Davis, my number one soldier. Been in the paint for me, man. I love you, man. (laughs) That's my girl, man. Anyways, man, this is a new episode of No Cupcake Zone, man. Uh, I'm a father right now. You know, I thought No Cupcake Zone was going to be gone, but you know what? Fuck it. Let's 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 run off. Ran off on the floor twice. 
Hey, let's run off on him again. Ran off on the floor twice. Hey, my little boy just touched down. But anyways, I'm not going to take too much of your time because I know you don't want to hear from me. We finna get, uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself, man. We're going to take a quick commercial break. You already know what it is, man. <laughs> With over 20,000 plays in over 20 different countries, you are now listening to the hottest show in Southwest Florida, hosted by the best host in Southwest Florida, the number one stunner, Triple B-L-A-C-K. Have you ever asked yourself, what if something happens to me? How is my family protected? Will I be able to retire one day? Am I covered? Are my taxes filed correctly? These are all important questions that need to be answered. Visit the experts at C.J. Noel Insurance Services for all your financial and insurance needs. Internationally known for their excellence, C.J. Noel Insurance has proudly served the Naples area for over 20 years and is the number one Blue Cross Blue Shield health insurance provider in the Southwest Florida area. Conveniently located in Naples at 2800 Davis Boulevard, Suite 208, Stop by or call 239-403-8391 for an appointment or a quote. You are now listening to the No Cupcake Zone podcast, where there ain't nothing sweet. Hosted by your boy, Triple Black. Now back to our show. Yeah, we back in the building. Hey, put on your rain coats. You already know what it is, man. Rain man. Rain of Terror, but it ain't R A I N, man. It's something different. I'm gonna let him explain it, man. Introduce yourself, man. Round of applause first, bro. Good. Hey, but before we do that, let me take a couple laps, man. No, let me take one lap. Let me run off on the plug because, hey, you know what? We was on Facebook. Doug Ray said he did some numbers and he said Urshel did some numbers. And then you said we finna do some grand. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm running off on the plug already. I'm really finna run off on the plug. All right. Let me take, let me do my dance real quick, man. Ran off on the floor twice. We finna do some numbers, man. Introduce yourself, man. I'm sorry about that. I'm just like, hype. Hey, he's straight. He's straight. What the business is, Rain Man, aka the president, aka the Black Obama. You know what I'm saying? You politicking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying. We need something to stand for. You feel me? I rather, I rather, I rather rock. So I feel like that's real, and I feel like they just be out here just right and you know. Yeah. Hey, man. One thing I gotta ask you, man. You gotta choose a side, man. Are you two three nine or you three five two, man? Keep it real, man. One, no keep case on. Keep it real. I'm I'm fifty fifty on that one, bro. Because I just spent <laughs> half my life. I just spent half my life in both places. Yeah, like, straight up. Like I've been I've been in Gainesville for probably since I was eighteen, mostly. And under eighteen, I've been. In, I was in Naples, you know. So I spent the better half of my life in Gainesville. I, I probably connected with more people in Gainesville. Probably more people okay. in Gainesville, you know. So I ain't saying, you know, I just. But Naples is always family. I ain't saying like that. I grew up. I spent eighteen years in Naples, and that's eighteen right. years a family right there. So okay, I mean, so, I, scenario. I, I 50, 50. Scenario: We in a club. You know what I'm saying? You got mm-hmm. Naples on one side, you got three, Gainesville on the other, and somebody step on somebody's Jordan and it's about to go down. Oh, Who's it don't be side nothing. Side you want? It ain't nothing in the club when I'm in there. They gonna squash <laughs> that. You, if you my people, you my people. Ain't nobody finna mess with you. So if you my people over here, then my people over there, then it's just ain't nobody finna mess with nobody tonight. Okay. Y'all handle that some other time type of situation. I can't, I ain't no, I can't stop what nobody do 24 hours a day, but it's going, you're going to have some respect for me when I'm here. I ain't going to let nothing happen to him. I ain't nothing going to happen to him. So y'all just have to have, they, I, I, it don't really come to, I ain't never really had that problem because most people I hang with, they're respectful of one another. So I don't really hang with disrespectful people. So yeah. I don't really worry about it. 
Nah, man, I'm just fuck with you, man. Two, three, nine. No, I know, I know, go, I know. I know. We go everywhere, man. We travel heavy. Every, I mean, we good with every counties, cities, zip codes, all that, man. Man, talk about the single before we get into it, man. You know, radio heavy play, right? Yeah, just it's just been dropped on um, probably like a week or two ago. On um, my MP3 waxed it gold service, so it's been e blast. It's only been not blasted once. I've had some feedback um, on it, but it's got a couple more. It still got another month of work for blast to go. But it, it, it's 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 yeah yeah. Um, I don't you know. I just tell you what the people say. I can't. I don't really, not really the type of person. I think it's a hot track. Yeah. But it's not. It, it don't really be really, really be on me what I think. You know, it's on what the people think. And you know, people say it's great though. I mean, yeah. I you know, I ain't been out there long enough for me to you know. But I haven't heard nothing bad. Everybody, I, I'm the DJ and. Was it Marietta say she sound like the hood anthem for the summer? I don't know. He might have like was, he might have was gassing me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna drop a bomb real quick just to let some people know. And I'm gonna fire a couple shots. Yeah, that's only right. Hey, you was official, but you was official right now because this is the number one podcast in Southwest Florida, and I just played your salt. So, (laughs) you was official. That's real. That's real. That's real. That's real. Hey, man, before we get get into it all the way, man, dog, is this a myth, dog, in Gainesville, man? Is there a place where a whole bunch of bats shit at? And um, the Gainesville green grow and motherfuckers hit that shit and they just go on a yeah. whole different level. Is that a myth? Yeah, that's a myth. It is okay. a place where all the bats be like they go at night to sleep. Okay. But that's on the University of Florida property. So I know they ain't growing no, no, no weed out there and you ain't going out there to get nothing or nothing that ain't happening. But it is a place where all the bats be and that's probably, you know, I don't know. Somebody, I heard somebody probably bad shit. <laughs> there, like some weed grew in bat shit, and that's some shit that you know put people down. Somebody could, somebody might have went and got some, you know. Yeah, man, anything is possible. I wouldn't put nothing past nobody in games. Yeah, yeah. man, mm-hmm. talk about where you were born, man. Were you born in Naples? Yeah, born and raised Naples community. Yeah, yeah. Um, River Park to probably I was probably like. Seven, six, about five or six, about probably like four or five, and then moved to George Washington Carver to probably all about 10, 11, 12, and then we moved to Golden Gate. Yeah. Talk about your yes, family, sir. man. How many brothers? I know you got one brother, Tyran, but uh, talk about yes, your yes, other family, man. Uh, I got cousins, you know, um... I don't know, Jimmy Perry, you probably know Jimmy. Yeah, he was, yeah um, I interviewed him. Man, shout out to Jimmy, man. That's a hustling ass dude, man. This motherfucker yeah, right here is probably sell boy, he's probably selling something right now, man. He's probably he selling crash, grits right, or something on the side of the road right now. In between you know, workouts and shit. <laughs> You're right. You ain't right. Look up got it bad, boy. He hustled at the extension. Boy, that boy be hustling, but I love it, man. He gonna make it yeah, far, yeah. man. I can see this guy. Yeah, doing big things in the future, man. Because it's you can't teach that hustle right there, man. That's you, nah, you gotta can't be teach it. Yeah. Nah. But you know, you know, um, Naples. What's up, though? I learned, I learned, I learned ninety five percent of my skills to make it outside of Naples in Naples, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like from from Doug Ray and the people that I grew up with, Hershell. You know, all of them, D, all of us growed up together, you know, all of them, we were within two miles of each other for the first, what, 10 years of our life, you know what I mean? So we, 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 we did a lot of things together as kids and it mended us and molded us to be the young teenagers that we were, you know what I'm saying? And to be the young men that we are today, I guess you could say. Yeah. Hey. I'm going to ask you, man, in your age group, I know in my age group, but in your age group, man, who ran the yard? What I'm talking about, who was the bully? 
who was always pressing people in the schoolyard? Well, you talking about just in general? In general. Who is in the, general, the bully? <laughs> yeah. Who is the who who like to fight the most? Yeah. Who would is probably the be, I you put know it who on two, 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 Ain't nobody really running because we wasn't fighting each other. We were fighting the own, well, two people, B and probably Minions. Those were the two fighting of our, of our kind that I can remember. Yeah. Um, me and Spotty was a year younger, I'm not sure. but that, that's how that we all grown up together that year, one year, two year above or under, we was all together that day. Okay. All right. But well, yeah, yeah, yeah. D yard, and me and say, them was the two. They, I don't know. They both bump hard. I can't sit here and tell you who would be who up. They bump <laughs> hard. Both of them. <laughs> both of them would tell you straight up. They be like, yeah, he said it's true. I don't know. I don't know if they ever fought. They probably did, but they both yeah. bumped so hard that I can't remember who won if they did, to be honest with you. Yeah. I always yeah. ask people. Hurst and those hands too. Now they want them to be messed up with Hurst though. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, they want nobody to hurt those hands though. But he wasn't really going to be too much fighting, but he done fought, you know, but he, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so who who was the plug on the snacks? You know what I'm saying? When y'all was little. Who was the plug? The caddy lady or the lily dilly spot? Who was the plug? Uh, I think the lily dilly spot had it on a lot when I was young. Um, I think that was Miss Hadley around the corner, I believe. I ain't sure. Yeah. My memory might be bad. Could be good, though. Never know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You guys had some fast people, man. On the field day, who's taking who's taking the blue ribbon, bro? Between you, Herschel, D, and uh, me and some uh-huh. of them. Well, actually, I was a year older. Man. Well, I, I, I was a year older than all of them. I took first place. Okay. So, but by, out of them, I believe her shell was the fastest. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. I'm pretty sure. I like probably better on. <laughs> yeah. But he was probably he was a little faster than me. He's gonna nudge me every time. I I mean I don't know. <laughs> so uh, what what age did you start playing football? Um, I think we probably started around about five or six years old. We used to um go from we was all in Georgia. Like, we was all in the projects, I guess you could say, George Washington Carver or River Park or Gordon River, somewhere else enough. All of us was living in that same area. We all just, I don't know, actually, that's the best thing ever happened for us because it kept it got us some, some type of structure in our life, you know what I'm saying, different than what we already had, you know what I'm saying? Um, but we took it upon ourselves to get to practice and know that I think our coaches, they took it upon themselves to come get us out of the hood, you feel me? And, yeah. We, we we played football from five or six years old to eighteen till we graduated, and you know, we all went somewhere and tried to make it happen. Yeah. So, uh, off the field, who were some of your mentors? Like you know, you look up to some, you know, the, some of the OGs that uh, you know made a mark in your life, and who were some of the on the field heroes that you you had growing up? You talking about locally? Yeah. Um, well, um, people I looked up to when I was young, probably who I would say, I wasn't really. I ain't say I didn't really look up to the streets. Wasn't really like. I don't know. We hung around people in the streets. We. I ain't gonna say that. My friends was definitely in the streets. Some of them, some of them no, but. We had went to Baron Collier. We was on something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, but I'm talking about we when still, you were you were in the when you were in Gordon River, um, George Washington Carver. At the early age, everybody you, you ain't have to be in the streets, but who gave you some game? At, who gave you some game? Who gave me some game? I would have to say, I don't know. It'd be like I guess the the. The guys I was that was five, six, seven years older than me that I, yeah. I that I Ex- example, you know, you know like, like Love was, and yeah. Matt okay. Moore and um, Tony. Um, I hung with Tony for a little bit. You know, I was probably thirteen. They was eighteen. 
So I looked up to them, I guess, because I hung with them. I ain't really know too many more people outside of that far as, you know, I had cousins that was doing, was getting it, you know, that's for sure, 100, 200, $300,000 guys. But I, I went to college. I wanted to go to college. I ain't, so I, I ain't look up to that. But it, it was definitely, it's definitely, you know, it, in life they changed. But at that age, you know, I ain't started smoking till I got out of high school. We wasn't really smoking till when I left. They smart smoking. They see, yeah, we weren't smoking. We wasn't really doing what they were doing, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we ended up living life. You know, all did life take you wherever it take you. Okay, let's talk about on the field, man. On the field, though. On the field, though. Who who did Tory Reese? think he was, you know what I'm saying, in the backfield, imagining running the football and, and doing that. Who you thought you was? Well, me, I think I was like a little Barry Sanders or something, you know what I'm saying? That's who I looked up to, um, because he was probably about a little taller. I was probably a little taller than Barry, but I ran like, I felt like I ran like Barry. Like, you know, I feel like you couldn't, you, like, it was a yard, two yards to get. They going to everybody know who's going to get the ball and I'm going to get these two yards and we're going to keep moving and we're going to keep it doing like that. That's how I felt. And, you know, I can't say every time I got them, but I felt like that. Okay. I felt like you couldn't stop me from getting them too. Okay. So you were the Barry Sanders, though. you know, that's the, the childhood hero of many people, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 What was the, I always ask people, what was your football moment? Like, the first moment that you realized that you were a little bit different and you were actually good at this game. It's usually like a big hit, first touchdown or big run. When did you realize it? Um, it I, I think it was my first year playing. I'm not sure. It might have was my second because my first and second year, my first year actually, I played on it. Everybody played on the Cowboys and I signed up later for so I ended up playing on the Vikings team. All the black people was on most of it was on the Cowboys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. I ended up ended up playing the Cowboys and everybody was on the Cowboys, you know what I'm saying? So on I ended up breaking out of something and I had a good game against them. So on I got confidence against that game. I can't say it made me think that I was better than nobody, but it made me know that I could play football. I ain't really I could play football too, I guess you could say. Yeah. So when you were on the Gators Every year, were you were, were you did you run the yard? Were you the big big dog? Nah, say me and Hirsch, you no, know, he did his thing. We was always on the same team, pretty much nine times out of ten. I'm gonna get the MVP, and he get the best running back, so I get the captain, and he get the. We will both get some type of, you know what I'm saying? So it was nobody. He that dude though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause got like five thousand yards in, in high school. Yeah. Hey, man, but you know what? I always like to ask this question, too, man. Do you think your, you know, your Gators teams, like, you know, your senior midget and junior midget teams can handle, can run with any other Gator teams back then? I mean, in the past, in the future. Do you guys think that you guys could, you know, beat anybody? I think so. Um now we, you know, I'm gonna be real with y'all. There's no cupcakes on, so I'm gonna yeah. tell the truth. Now, we used to go to Atlanta. Now they used to spank us. But, but in our defense, they got different weight classes and they had different age groups and all that type of situation. So most of the time, when we went down there, we played against kids that was two years or something older than us, and they're way more than us. You feel me? So I can't judge it like that, really. But as far as around here in Florida and anything, no, nah, ain't nobody really. We, we we pretty much only lost the game every year, maybe at the most two. Did you, you guys beat the Rebels? No, nah, we probably played them once or twice during my when I was. Um, they they beat us though. They beat us like by touchdown one time. I don't remember what happened, what happened the other time. My senior, I think we played them. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me, I'm going to be, you got to be honest. The Rebels, the Rebels, the Rebels had more, you know, they had, you know, they had more square feet to work with than we did, you know, so we had our best, they had their best thing, you know what I'm saying, like that, but, you know, we, we was in there though. They respected okay. us. Yeah. We finna transition into high school. 
you got to be blood raw because, you know, Baron Collier, let me bust a couple shots. Yeah. <laughs> Baron Collier got a history of doing this. Ran off on the floor twice. They be running off. Or the plug, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a long twice. time. You know what I'm saying? You know, you were a gator. You were in that area. And then high school yeah. come around, you mysteriously, you know, not mysteriously, but, you know, you end up in a different part of town. I want to just know, man, did you have a sponsor? Because your boy, Doug Ray, already said he had a sponsor. Did you have a sponsor, too? <laughs> nah, I had no sponsor. I had motivation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm no saying? Uh, I was motivated. I was motivated to do something different. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, you were, you were motivated to be a redneck or something, man. Were you wearing, were you listening to country music back then? You wanted to, to go back there and hang out with the Cowboys or something, dog? Is that what it was? You want to go nah. To the nah, actually, actually, actually. I think Baron Collier had won the district the year before I went, so they was like, you know, they they was top, they was top dog. Now they wasn't like they hadn't ran off with the plug or nothing. Yeah. You feel me? But they was doing their little thing, you know, as far as you know, football. And I don't know me. It was more like I guess to be honest with you, man. Kind of, it was it was half academic because I wanted to go to school and I didn't want to be stuck in Naples forever. You know, I wanted to be able to make it out of here. I ain't want to be like, I ain't saying it like that, but that was our goal, all our goals. We all, you know, we all, God blessed us to be able to make it to college. You know, that's, I ain't saying that I wanted to stay. That's not my plan. That's just what happened. Okay. Hey, but there wasn't um, any any things like, you know, as soon as you hit the campus, hey, Mr. Reese, hey, <laughs> hey, here's, like, here's this grade. What? Grade do you want in um in social studies? We can make that. Nah, happen. nah, nah. <laughs> it was straight though because when I went there, I stayed in the stadium. You know what I'm saying? Now, that was that was that was that was awesome. I couldn't imagine, you know, like living in the football stadium. That was that was like bigger than life to me. But it was straight. You know? So it wasn't nothing like, hey, which one do you want? Do you want Becky? Do you want Melissa? Or do you want... <laughs> they, they just come with the game, man. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got to give you that. That just come with the game. You know, they opportunists. They seek opportunity. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But talk about it, the culture shock, though. Um, how different was it? You know, did you Baron feel Collier. outcasted at all? At Baron Collier? Yeah. Well, be, I'm going to be honest with you, right? I went to Golden Gate all the way through. So it wasn't a culture shock to me. Um, I stayed in my aunt part of school at Golden Gate Elementary. Yeah. Um, so she took me to school with her even when I stayed. She stayed she stayed in town on the part of too. So she took me to school with her from since kindergarten, bro. And so I went to Golden Gate Elementary. So I I wasn't know and so the the, the Baron Cardi thing wasn't really a it was a shock to them because I was still in Naples District for sure, like a hundred. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Golden Gate Elementary didn't have nothing to do with Baron College because I was still in Naples District, but it wasn't that big of a shock because it was some of the same um, friends I had. I guess that I had been going to school with. You know, I, I, if I would have just if I'd have went to Golden Gate, probably in middle school, it'd have probably been different. But you know, I, I got a chance to go to. From elementary, and that probably, I can't remember the culture shock. Probably was definitely because I was the wild child for sure. But yeah. I got you. I got. I got. I got adapted. I guess you know what I'm saying. And it was straight. It was straight. I, I think. I think it because it got me ready for the world, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. I can't say that it was gonna have to be that way, but it got me ready for the world. You know, the world yeah. change. But they had to know who you were because you know they had a his, rich, rich history. They had James Townsend. B uh T Y and like was it uh, Bo Williams. Oh so my grandma knew. worked for the school. My grandma worked for the school. So okay. they knew so I already she was straight, so on her I guess it, no, that no, that's what it was. They love her. Yeah. So your freshman year, did you jump right into varsity or did you play freshman ball? No, nah, when I got there they didn't believe in that. I played it after I played J V 
And then I moved up to varsity. But Coach Tam had been believing playing freshman as at that point. Now next year got the and then Hurst came and then I went to varsity and then everybody's out there position. We had some problems, but that's what it was all the way to <laughs> yeah. So uh yes, let me ask you, and you be honest, I know you and Hirsch are real tight. You guys have always been real tight. Was there some part of you that, you know, after playing JV, you know, you going to be at varsity, obviously, you know, you're a, you know, you're a good player, you know, you, you're set to be the man or whatever. Was it a part of you like, man, damn, man, Herschel, God, like, this is my, let, let me run this. Like, you know, mm-hmm. no. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I ain't never played without him. He really never played without me, man. So it was like, it was only right. <laughs> yeah. But how did you we guys decide? Never, we, you know? we ain't never, we ain't never, we, we, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something about me and her. And it's crazy because it, I don't know. I said it could ever happen with anybody else, to be honest with you. But we ain't really never fell out. We all, I mean, I don't remember. We probably had some disagreements, but it wasn't nothing major, nothing. We ain't never, like, we always rode to school together. Or we always, you know, left school together. It, it was always, and it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? It was, I don't know. We, we ain't never go through that. Yeah. Football, I love the football, right? But I don't yeah. know. I, I, I still to this day, I'm just, I'm, I ain't, it's not that type. I'm just not, I don't know. I ain't, I ain't like that. Right. So it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't had nothing to do with football. I'm just. I'm just not like that. I want to see us all win. Right. But you know, you got some super competitive people. One in particular. I ain't gonna name no names, but you know, <laughs> you know everybody know who I'm talking about. The most competitive person <laughs> that I've ever seen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that guy right there, boy, it's intense, boy. Every moment. You, know, uh, you know. You, were, you, were you saying that your heart wasn't like, or you just are not a competitive person to that point, or you just your football wasn't like you know, like no, nah, bro. We always play with we always play with each other since since that first year I told you that I played on the um, the Vikings. So we always played with each other. Yeah. We always did our thing. Like it ain't stopped me. It ain't stopped him. If I yeah. got it ten, twelve times. I got a hundred. He got a hundred touchdown. So we, I'm straight. He might have got a hundred and thirty and thirteen carries. I got a hundred and a hundred. I got ten carries and a hundred and a touchdown. I'm straight. Yeah. So you played. You, you played. Um, <laughs> you guys played. You played fullback a little bit, right? Yeah, I played fullback a little bit. I think my soft my sophomore year. And then I think we split it up, had split backs. Yeah. Um, we did a lot of different things. So, um, yeah, my sophomore year, I think, because that's the offense that they had. And then after that, we had we got some quarterbacks and some receivers, and we started throwing the ball a little bit more. Uh, her started in the slot a little bit. We started doing different things. But we still, I mean, I mean he's still going to get 100 and 100, I mean, on the receivers. I just need me a hundred, or eighty, or seventy, or eighty, or ninety. I don't want to carry the ball no twenty times. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I ain't, you know what I'm saying. That we was not, we we ain't play for half halftime a lot, bro. Yeah, I know you so got to put half, an awesome team. After, yeah, after halftime, we 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 they just took us out of the game. So you just got to get it for halftime. You get you 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 yards for halftime. I'm straight. Yeah. And we yeah. win it. We're up 20, 30 points. I what you can do. You want to go in and try to get 40 more yards, 50 more yards. You just got to get what you get, bro. Yeah. So t- let's talk about some memories, man. Who were some opponents that you can remember, you know, especially if you're playing fullback, you know, there's always that one linebacker, that safety that made, you know, that gave you a headache, man. Talk about some some people that were like, damn, man, this guy right here, he's in my face they had, in the game. They had, no, I'm going to I'm 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 show some love, though, off real. But it's two of them. One, um, I'm going to have to get a uh, Fred Perry, though. We was young when we played him, but he still headbanged. You know? we, we beat them now, Naples High. But yeah. he 
<laughs> and that linebacker he coming at you like every time and I jumped over the top from the from the freaking one yard or half foot line. I swore I was I got in the touchdown by the nose of but it, that he jumped over the top too. Damn. And we hit head up. Damn. I luckily I got cross four, he hit me because so he he bring it every time though. And I think it was dude from Charlotte, it was a linebacker. I think he went to Florida State. It might have was Todd Rebo. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But yeah. he gon he gonna bang your head every time. I came across the middle one time on a little slot on a little uh quick in route or something. And boy, he banged me hard as I ever been banged in my life. I ain't yeah. never wanna catch the ball. There you got this <laughs> straight up. You got a hundred power to you, you feel me? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, but you got to validate no this. Uh, you know, he bust a couple shots. I don't got time to bust 50 shots, but, uh, you know, <laughs> D. Boykin said he made it. He made the ball rain out your hand when you guys played Naples Hot, man. Can you validate that, man? I don't know. He might have did. You know. I ain't, <laughs> hey, hey, look, 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 look. I ain't going to stomp on him. We beat him every time we played him. So whatever, you know what I'm saying? He, I ain't he was banging, y'all. <laughs> he was banging. They were banging. They did their thing. They thought they were, you know, we beat them every time we played them. Yeah. It took a fight. It took. I'm going I'm to bust one shot since you've been busting shots. We're going to bust one shot kill the whole game. <laughs> After I left. This is what we did at Baron Collier in my three years at, at my, in my, well, three years on varsity because, you know, I ain't really, I ain't gonna say my first year. I played, I say only three or four games of varsity. So in my three years of varsity, Baron Collier, we went from, I don't know where we was at to kicked off every school schedule in Collier County when I left. Yeah, cause uh, yeah, I heard I heard about that. It was like yeah. a probationary it was period a, where they nobody no probation. They were just mad. Yeah, no. nah, they were mad so we kept beating them. We beating the brakes off at three years straight. The show was Baron Carter. You know what I'm saying? Straight up, it ain't saying nothing to do with me. But if the show was Baron Carter, yeah. And hey, man, mm-hmm. you guys had some um, pretty tough defensive players. Man, you know Doug Ray. Was it uh Jose Albert, that big ass linebacker? <laughs> but uh mm-hmm. talk about some teammates, dog, that you played with, man, that were, you know, some bangers at practice, like, you know, whenever you had to do like Oklahoma drill and things like that, that, you know, was kind of annoying to go against with at practice. Oh, oh, we've had some banging white boy linebackers. I forgot their names. I ain't gonna sit here and lie to you, but we had two of them. Yeah, they gonna bang. Only time they ain't bang, man, it seemed like it's like we played four miles or something. Like they was scared of these or something. I don't know. But they bang now. I'm for, I like they was intimidated, I guess. Not scared. I guess, you know, more of an intimidation factor probably at that age. Um but yeah, they 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 yeah, they 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 we had some linebackers you didn't want to go through the trail with, but it was straight. <laughs> we had some line we had some linemen that'll hold it down, so you just gotta hold, trust them. You know. Yeah, we was pretty quick. We was pretty quick, fella. So you know, at the end of the day, if we could just nudge in one way or the other, we could probably try to scoop by. Okay. Hey, Oklahoma drill. You the running back, and Doug Ray, the wide. I mean the the linebacker. Are you That's juking vicious. him, or are you taking him? We probably don't have to do this. I don't know. You know, I was a pretty physical fella. But, you know, I ain't nobody trying to run into Doug Ray, period, <laughs> you know? Straight like that. You know what I'm saying? But if I had to, you know, I'm going I'm going, I'm going, going to try to go as low as I can. And, you know, I ain't, I'm far forward. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I ain't trying to let him hit me. You don't want him to hit you. He's a pretty vicious dude. I done seen him do some real nasty things to people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, best game in high school. Best game that you can remember? Best you far, far as um, yardage, you know, biggest game. Because I can remember one game. I can't remember what game it was, really, what team. But uh, you know how Joe Climas had the uh, uh, game week. of the week. And I remember you got off on one game. You took off, I think, like a kickoff. But it was like you and Herschel were, like, trading touchdowns. But I think you – um, ended up, you know, getting like the player of the game. 
I can't remember. Yeah. I can't even know which it done happened a couple of times in the, you know, in the years, but I don't remember no stats. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I remember taking some kickoffs. Hershey's was taking punch, so he was, he, and I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the kickoff, though. Yeah. Um, but there's got to be that one game that st- sticks in your mind that, like, damn. The one game that sticks really in my mind, that. I can't say it was the best game because it was just the easiest game. We beat Riverdale 75 to zip. I think I had, like, Three carries, I mean, four carries, three touchdowns, 100 yards. Um, I mean, we probably played one quarter. I mean, that wasn't the best game. That wasn't the best game, but stat-wise, four, four carries, three touchdowns, 100 yards, that was pretty straight. I mean, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask you this question. I, I know where it's going to go, but, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to ask you it anyways. Uh, best running back. In Baron Collier history, Herschel, Herschel, yeah, All right. <laughs> Clifton was bad. Now I don't you know. I ain't gonna say they said he Clifton was a bad man, you know. But you know, first we played. I think the level of competition was a little bit more um, harder because we played against from my freshman from his freshman year to his senior. Versus his freshman year, I ain't taking man for man one on I said both of them, like you know, probably the top two running backs. I don't see come out of here personally. You feel me? Um, but yeah, the level of competition on the Jordan and the LeBron type situation, the level of competition is the only thing you probably could say because the level of competition was fierce and the rules was different and people is just a lot different. You know, that's all. Okay, all right. Um, you know, in high school. You know, you got some tough guys on your team and stuff like that. All right. Just say you was in a back alley, back alley fight. You got three partners that you know of, and they can be current, old. Who you taking? Like, you get tried in a back alley. You got three people that you can bring with you. Who you bringing? Who I'm bringing in the back alley with me? Yeah, I'm going. You know, first off, I'm bringing Doug Ray. That's just no brainer. <laughs> sure. Um, well, we finna fight. Yeah, you finna, you finna fight. And then I'm gonna have to bring Black Tony with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm saying the third one. Um, Dude, man, I probably bring Big Levi with me, man. Yeah, straight up. Yeah, if I, if I got them three right there. I'm pretty straight. Yeah, three bangers, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm straight. Yeah, I ain't worried about nothing. Yeah, yeah man. Oh, you had a you know really great career at Baron Collier. You guys won a lot of games, and you know you stuck. You were a standout, no doubt. Uh, talk about who's after you from a recruiting perspective. Oh, uh, back then I probably had some South Carolina, Tennessee, and I think Northwestern was at me like crazy, but I was, I didn't want to go out of state. Um, it was some one double A, it was some more out of state too, but I just wasn't really focused on. I got a few letters from Miami though, but I hurt my shoulder. I see you here, so oh, there's a couple of probably South Carolina stuck with me and Northwestern stuck with me and some other schools stuck with me. Those are probably the top ones I think about, but I just ended up going to Florida and the coach that was recruiting this area ended up putting me on the team. Yeah. But, but you know, I was, you know, usually there's always a caveat to people, you know, they either go to jail or they couldn't get the grades, but I heard your grades on fleet because you were, you know, smart dude. Um, why Florida? When you could have, you know, if Florida had at that time, they probably had Emmett Smith and they had Eric Rett rating, uh, waiting, and they had a host of other backs. Why Florida? I'm going to be honest with you, right? When I left high school, um, my first one, I wanted to, I, I wanted to play sports, but then after I hurt my shoulder, I seen how a lot of shit, it, I mean, things could change just that fast. You feel me? Like you can't just everything. You can't, I can't just put all your eggs in that one basket. So 
I just didn't want to play football as much no more. I went to Florida and I just applied. I I, I got a thousand on the SAT. I uh, applied to Florida. I got accepted, and this doggone football coach ended up. One of the coaches ended up finding out that I had applied. Yeah. And was and yeah and put me on the team. I found out when I went to school to to go to my dorm. They canceled it and said you stay in the athletic dorm. I said that's what's up. <laughs> so, so did you? Um, you know, you can be honest, be blood raw with this. You know, I know you had to have some type of love for the football, but were you playing a, a lot of the sport just because of other people? Like, like you, your heart wasn't all the way in it. No, I love football. I can't say it was all I really, you know, up until I, I told you my senior year, I hurt my shoulder. I ain't never been hurt before. Yeah, and I probably was out like seven games. And I don't know, during that time, I got to see this more to life than football, I guess you could say. Um, and just how things, how quickly things change. Like, people still there, it's still funny, but, you know, you're just not in the line. Like, things keep keep going. You feel me? Um, so, it, it wasn't that I ain't want to play football. I, I always loved football. I just, um, it's just my senior year, I got a chance to see that, you know, yeah, it's more to life than football. Football might not just be what it is for you. I ain't saying don't play, don't chase it, but, you know. Right. So, have a backup plan. At Florida, man, um, you, you went there like 94, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, who were the, um, the big dogs on campus, because uh, well, was Terry Dean there? Um, he was there. I think it was his last year, baby. Yeah. Did, did that influence you a little bit for uh, choosing Florida? No, nah, I don't think so. Um, I didn't. Miami was a private school. I wasn't. I didn't really want to go to school in Miami anyway. Florida State academically wasn't the greatest situation at the time, I think. And then it offered the major that I wanted at the time. And Florida was just the best academic, it was the best school, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That I saw at that time, you know, I mean, it turned out to be, but that's just, you know, that's how it happened. Yeah. But I like the Gators. Orange and Blue, I always played for the Gators, bro. That probably was 50% of it. I was a Gator all my life, you know, so why not go be a Gator? So who was uh your competition in the backfield when you when you got to camp? Well when I got to camp, <clears throat> I was they switched me to receiver because that's who that recruited my area was the receiving coach. And I should have just stayed really because common sense should have told me, you know, like he he the coach that recruited you is the coach that you know you're gonna be playing for would be a lot easier because he know you more than the other coaches because he recruited you. But I was used to playing running back and not receiver, so I can't say that was kept me from playing forever or whatever. But it's just I don't know. I probably should have maybe explored it a little longer though. Yeah. So who was the backs and the receivers at that time? Was it like Redell Anthony? Uh, yeah. West Green. Yeah. Uh huh. All of them. Let's just say, yeah. <laughs> and in the backfield, Fred Taylor, okay. um, Tyrone Baker, um, and Eric Red, Michael was there. Yeah. Um, Terry Jackson. Okay. All those. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what was that moment in, um, it had to be in like training camp and stuff like that, that you know, this was a, a different level. Sure. Oh. It's a different. Different level was exactly when you had that same, like, them one-on-one drills that you had in high school and them um, goal line drills that you had in high school and, like, I don't know, the situational drills, like, third and ten and stuff like that. You the, the 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 sound of the pass popping is 12 times greater, put it like that. So every play. <laughs> you feel me? Like, you the these, these 300... 300 pounders popping pads, you can hear it from the outside of the stadium pretty much, bro. They popping. Pow, you can hear them. Like, so the difference is the intensity and the, the, the size of the people, and you know what I'm saying? 
and the, probably the strength and all of that. Really, to be honest with you, it's like so it's 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 it's, it's intimidating, but yeah. it's straight. It's yeah. just something you got to get used to. Yeah. Did you uh, red shirt or did you? Uh, uh, what, yeah, red shirt. You red shirted. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Now, when you red shirted, uh, what year did you stop playing? Probably like ninety five, ninety six. I only right. played like a year, man. The next year, I, I, I ain't played no more. I thought. Yeah. Was there, a, yeah. um, you know, an event or you know something that kind of like triggered, you know, you just saying, you know what, I'm done with this. You know, let me go to school and and do something. <laughs> they just do too much, man. Florida, you like you feel like like when you get a scholarship or you play for the Gators or you play probably for any major university, you giving your life to them, like you feel me. You wake yeah. up, it's going to, you got class at like eight, so you got to get a lot done for eight, like five or six o'clock, you have to wake up, you might run two, three miles around the whole stadium or something, work out and all that, because after you get out of class, you got to practice, so you got to do all this for this, and then when you get out of there, then you got to go eat, then when you go eat, you got to go to the tutor, then after that, it's like nine, ten o'clock, shoot, you got time to go to sleep, you wake up, you got to do this again, same thing, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I it's straight. You. It's it's straight, but it's like I don't know. It was just I, I guess I found out I, I I ain't said I ain't love it like that, but I wasn't in it for all of that. No, I I I understand. I went to college to play football, and <laughs> the last day, the last practice was the one of the best days of my life. Like I didn't look back. I was like, I don't want to do this. You, you're right. You absolutely right, man. You know, off season is is even more annoying than the regular season because you're waking up at four o'clock on weeknights yeah, and going to work out and you got school all day. It's it, yeah, it's it's a grind. Dog. It's a grind. I respect the people that do it, you know, because you know. But me, I I, I didn't I didn't get a football scholarship. I just. Got a, I got financial aid and other like type scholarships, so yeah. I ain't have to be out there. If I had to be out there, I would have stayed out there, bro. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna sit there. Absolutely, I ain't telling saying nothing about nothing like that. If, if, if that was my way to University of Florida, then I'm gonna stay out there and make it happen till I leave. Yeah, straight up. And I hate to to keep rehashing this, but I'm gonna. This is no cupcake zone, but it, it almost sounds and and I could be way off base that you kind of almost chose Florida, you know, to get out of it. Because I think if had you would have, you know, went to South Carolina and got one of those full rides and stuff, would you would have felt more obligated to keep going to school and doing something that you wasn't totally 100% into? Yeah, that could have been it right there. Um yeah, it could have been it right there. Um, cause if I, said, if I go to school, like I said, if I would have told them I'm going to school to play football, I'm going to go and I'm going to play. And, but I didn't find out at Florida that I was going to do that until I went to school for August. And if I would have known that he was going to do that, I would have went to school in the summertime, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And went ahead and got a head start instead of just jumping right in August. But I mean, it was straight. Um, I don't know, yeah, but you're right though. Either way, it probably was. That's probably what it was. So before all of that, probably I just didn't want to be obligated. Um, I didn't even know what was coming though. I probably made a good decision too. Cause boy, look at here. <laughs> you have fear. They own. They don't own you. I don't mean it like that in a like slavery type of way. Yeah. But it's just pretty much like I mean it's. It's shape it's gonna shape your life and we're gonna take your life and take it where it need be. Now I ain't saying it like that now. Right, right, right. It's it's going it's going somewhere like the military in five right. seconds. You just don't know. No, I no, I I understand exactly <laughs> what you're saying. Especially I mean, I don't understand it to that level, but I, you know, you were in the mix of big time college football. You know, Tory Reese goes and does something, you know, bangs abroad at a bar. It's Florida football player banging yeah. abroad at a bar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not yeah. you. You everything that you do is representative of that university. So you know, yeah. and you can't escape that. And I can I can understand how you know some people are just like man. You know I don't want like just let me go to school and let me do my thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's hard enough. It's going to be hard enough for me to try to get his education. Yeah, 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 man. But uh, enough about football, man. So that was over, man. Talk about Rain Man. How did Rain Man, did you just get sucked in the streets and just started a reign of terror or you just started making it rain on stripper hoes or something, man? How did you get to be Rain Man? Uh, rain Man came with his music. Um, I don't know. I probably started doing music probably like six or seven probably years ago. Yeah. Um, I don't know. One of my little homies was, he's a beat man and I guess it was Jeezy time then, and it was, what, Snowman, and I don't know. I came up with Rain Man, dog, and I had, uh, it was Rain Man the other way at first, and I heard some pretty awful things about the way that go down, the spelling and everything, so I changed it, and I wasn't going to change my name, the name, so I just changed it to Rain Man, the other spelled the other way. So it's Rain, like, Rain Supreme, like, it's, I ain't trying to rain terror on nobody, but I'm a terrorized at it. Terrorize no, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not Reese Cup or something like that? I mean, we got Reese Man. Shout out to Reese Man. But uh Reese Cup or something like that, man. <laughs> Reese Bar. Reese's Pieces. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like well that. my my nickname my nickname was T <laughs> my nickname was T Rock before that. Um Okay. Um I don't know, man. Um, it had to be something like what I stand for, bro. I was out here before I ever started rapping. I had, I done most of the things I did, I did before I ever started rapping. So I, I ain't want no pie, no pie name or no name that was not associated with my name. I said Reese, but I ain't never been called Reese. No, Maurice, that's his first name. So that's in it. Kind of like me ain't no, I ain't, you know. It was Tori or it was T Rock, you know what I'm saying, or something like that. So, yeah, those names they ain't really stand out. Rain Man, I don't know what Rain Man. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't no script of rain like make it rain like that. Just <laughs> rain. <laughs> More rain on the game. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, you know you being in Gainesville, you know. And coming from from Naples, you know, a lot of people don't know about Naples and stuff like that. You said that you was really out here, and um, answer this, pro- I mean, this question honestly, because you were from Naples and you were, you know, out there in uh, you probably in Goon Central in Gainesville. Did you have to put a little extra on it to like let like make motherfuckers respect you because you're from Naples? Oh, mm. I just no, nah, not really. No, I ain't said a lot of the things I done done. I've done worse things than I talked about in the music. I ain't really that hard in the music. To be honest with me, it's just probably harder than the average person. Right. But no, nah, uh, not really. I, 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 I yeah, no, I done done some things, broski. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm just saying. I'm not know. harder in the music. I ain't harder in the music than I am in real life. For real. I ain't said I killed nobody in that. I ain't said I ain't, I ain't talk about stuff like that. I just try to grab my nuts a little harder than the average. Right. But, but now, I what I'm saying is, you know, because Naples don't got no reputation like Fort Myers, like being goons. I mean, we a lot of hustlers. We ain't get no pussies or anything like that. But, true, you know, true, a lot true, of people. True. Yeah, I, since 18, I've been gone. Feel me? Yeah. But, I feel you. I got some real. I got some. I got some gangsta ass niggas now. Though. Don't get it twisted. This one's some ones in Naples now. I'm yeah. from a throwback. I ain't from the new block. From the new block, I feel you. I meant from the new, from the new um generation, I feel you. But the uh, back then, to my shit, you had the ray on your on your on your yeah. um no, show, no. show them. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. I, um, did you? It's when thug, you were not there, a few. It's a few. Them. I hung around them. I was blessed to be around some of the few right. thugs. Love, love. That's my cousin. You know. So I was blessed to be Matt Mo. I was blessed to be around some of the really thugs around her. Old yeah. school, so bad. And I take them with me anywhere I go. And I've been gone a long time. Feel me? So I feel what you saying, but I was blessed to be around them. Okay. Uh, they, 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 we can go day. And they buy whatever. Ain't nobody from this. I'm telling you, four miles. You know, it's respect, though. It ain't no Debo. You can't, you can't Debo the game, bro. It's always somebody that got a bit of scrap. 
feel me? It's always somebody got to do it. Um, that to pull the trigger fast. You feel me? So you, it's, it's about respect at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, it, it ain't always about Debo. It's just about having the more respect. You know what I'm saying? That Debo shit come into play something, you know, ain't ain't really no Debo. Debo got his ass whooped by Craig. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, what are some of your uh, musical influences up there? Because North Florida, the only person that I really fuck with that I even talk think of is uh, Blood Raw, and he's from like I think Pensacola. And uh, don't put me with that North Florida rap, bro. No, nah? I'm saying I'm from down here. You yeah. feel me? But I'm just yeah. saying, who influenced? <laughs> who was your influence? Ain't nobody, nobody, ain't nothing else doing something up from up there. Maybe somebody that made it, like Jesus. Yeah. Plies, I even say Plies, because, you know, I know the little dude. Well, I mean, the little dude. I know them, you know what I'm saying? That's so why it made it. So it may seem like you could do it. If you know somebody did it. Yeah. But uh, who was your influence? No, so you were more influenced from, from people down here than up there. Well, actually, honestly, and truthfully, um, the whole music thing just came about because one of my neighbors, my fan, Protestant in Gainesville, he, he made beats. Okay. Well, his homeboy made beats, and we ended up in the same place at the same time. And I just said, I tried out, you know what I'm saying? And it was too crazy, so I just kept playing with it for a little bit. And yeah. I probably done dropped like three, four, five, six of the mixtapes, you know, and kept moving, man. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask you this question. This uh, this is called uh, Drown, Save, and Kill. So you got to drown mm. a person, you got to save a person, you got to kill a person. I'm just trying to figure mm. out who, you know, is like your musical influences, most people that you would like. Okay. And, and I'm going to go the trap, the trap genre. Uh, you got Rick Ross, Jeezy, and T.I. Who do you drown? Who do you save? And who do you kill? Um, well, I ain't going to kill now on the day that made me. Drown. Let's just say, just get rid of. Like, get out of here. Throw him off the boat. Yeah. Uh, well, probably, to be honest with you, I have to, and I, I love stick with home team, you know what I'm saying? I'm on this Florida, whole, all Florida first thing, you know what I'm saying? But I probably have to kick Rick Ross off the boat, man, because I'm a real <laughs> nigga. <laughs> I ain't, but I ain't, you know, I ain't judging you, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna be a real nigga and talk to y'all. There's no cupcakes on and shit. So <laughs> he just dropped the ball. He gotta go. Yeah, he gotta go. I'm just saying, he, yeah. he not, he the un, he the un, not, he the least realest out of them three, bro. You know, okay. from what I know, you know, I ain't finna just, I don't know, I ain't judging, but from what I know, he the least, he the least real. I'm all about real faith. Ain't got nothing to do with your money, so. Yeah. All right. Who he might he, he might push me out of the boat. You know, I don't know. I don't know. He might not. I don't know. <laughs> so he just flaw. <laughs> right. I don't know. Jeezy and T.I. Jeezy and T.I. Um, I ain't even, I don't. I, I'm just going gonna, gonna to save both of them, bro. <laughs> you got to save one and push one off the boat, dog. I ain't pushing down one of them niggas off the boat, bro. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, um, I always put people to buy in that, man. <laughs> Jeezy too fucking hood and T.I. too fucking real, bro. I ain't know it. You know, he can't hold it. Dope boys in the trap, nigga. That's yeah. too real, you feel me? He came yeah. up from dope boys in the trap. Yeah, you I know? got you, bro. You can't really kick him off the boat, dog. No. Man, you know, you talk about the black Obama, the very black Obama. essence of that. Give me a feeling like my president is black, my Lambo's blue. Nah, hey. nah, 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 nah. First off, we're going to kick Obama all the way off this stuff, off this, huh? like how we kick Tory all the way off of Rain Man. Rain Man on the whole, he's whole, I mean, he's Tory. 
but his whole other entity. So right. So this Black is Obama an and Obama ego. This is yeah, I ain't buy, I ain't buy none of that shit. What he buy, you know, me and the politics, what he on, he on, that's him. See, I'm the black Obama, like one in the hood, that's really for us, that's really going to teach you something, that's really going to talk about something real, not no, you feel me, I'm not a popcorn rapper, God bless him, I'm not this, but I'm going to keep it, I'm gonna, I, I ain't going to never get too bougie for the people that I always fuck with me, you feel me? Like, we might, we might uh, try to get on commercial radio, but the song ain't finna be nothing that they can't ride to, you feel me? Right. I ain't finna leave them. Like, if we get in the car, everybody going. So, so Black Obama is like an alter ego. You know how, like, Jeezy is a snowman, and, like, T.I. is a trouble man, Rick Ross is, you know, Rosé. So it's kind of like a part of your personality. Yeah, because Obama's finna be gone, and I'm finna be home. Okay. You feel me? It's a rain man right now, but Obama, it's finna be Black Obama, period. You feel me? We're going to brain man in the back, and we're going to put Black Obama up front, but it's a trans, it's a transition into the Black Obama, I guess. It's not just... Yeah. It, it ain't just happening. Yeah. So who you been in a lab with that's noteworthy? Um, really, honestly, truly, um... I ain't been in the lab with nobody. <laughs> no. Nah. Um, nah. Um, I, I don't, it, it, me, I ain't really have a team when I started wrestling. You feel me? I just, it was me. I did at first kind of was like a, not a group, but the people that do that make the beats or whatever. Yeah. But after that, I just was on solo route and I ain't really one with the group situation and, Nobody want to really get help you out when you're at the bottom, bro. And um, I wasn't from there, so it wasn't like I had grown up with anybody to just want to see you make it or help you make it. Nobody was really rapping too much at that time. It's a million people that started since in the last six, seven, eight years. You know, bad. I'm really like a hundred billion million people have started rapping since then. Um, I don't know. So, yeah. From what I've seen, man, you serious about your music, man. I, I see the uh, the music videos and stuff like that. You serious about your music. You got your hustle on and stuff like that. But uh, in order to grow into this business, you got to, you know, be professional on a certain on a certain level. And the where I'm where I'm going with this is uh, there's a lot of wolves out here. There's a lot of wolves, especially in Gainesville. Um, you know, and you stunt pretty hard. Um, how, you know, how do you run a balance be, be, between being a businessman and still having your head on a swivel to deal with these wolves? <laughs> Good question. I'm going to be honest with you on that one, too. Um... I'm just blessed to have some good people see, that's around me, you feel me? And I don't be out, I don't go out, like, in Gainesville, I don't go out every night. Um, but my homies be out. Um, so it's like I'm there, but I'm not there. So it's like, it's like your people, the people that you hang around, they in the club. It's like you in the club, too, because them your peoples. Yeah. You feel me? So I don't allow to be in the club. So I still have a presence because I guess I could say they have a presence. As long as they have a presence or we still have a presence together, then it's like I'm in the club. I come to the club like once a week, maybe twice, maybe, you know, maybe not that week, maybe not that week either, but maybe that one day or something, you know, I go on the off night. I don't go really when everybody hanging out, you know. You just have to learn to just, you know, you don't got to always be in the spotlight, bro. Like, you, it, it's not always about you. You feel me? Like other people want to come around you and have fun. They want to, you know, like you can't always. You could be the life of the party. You already because you there. You okay. feel me? You don't got to do the most of just, you know. They, you just, just, you know, it's a balance. Is that's the balance. You got to learn to not always have to be the life of the party. The uh, people, people need water too. You feel me? Like the fish need water. Yeah. Swim. You can't hog up all the water. You know, you gotta like let everybody enjoy themselves. You know? Yeah. 
Talk about uh, talk a little bit about in uh, this mixtape, and I'm gonna have you drop a jewel on us um, and plug anything that you want to on the mix, man. Talk about this mixtape that you got, man. Who's on Black it? Obama. Who's on it? Who's the producers, man? You know, shout out people, bro. Black Obama. Um, the whole mixtape actually, honestly, is no features. It's straight rain, man. Um. It's a lot of different producers on um, Platinum Fellas. I got some Blazing Beats. I got uh, one of my homeboy, Big J, Jonathan. Um, I don't know. That's probably about it. Be honest so you with mean you, to um, tell me, man, you've been down in Naples all this time, man. And all you mean, you got 101 rappers in Naples, man, and nobody can make the album, bro. Come on, man. Well, it's not like, I ain't even saying it like that, you know. Actually, this, this Black Obama, this, um, I ain't, all this music been done since last year, bro. I ain't been in the studio this year. Okay. So, um, but in this music industry, um, like I said, from the beginning, I came up, nobody wanted to help me. I ain't, this I had to do it in Naples, but I was in Gainesville then, and nobody really was reaching out to help, I reached out, nobody had no beats, nobody had this, nobody had that, nobody had that, so I came up on my own, bro, like, I don't owe nobody no money for nothing I've done, I, everything I paid for, you feel me, like, to this point, like, from the studio time, time, it's a thousand to two hours, and everything, so, yeah, I ain't, saying, I ain't saying, I'm not saying I won't do nothing at this point, but, People have to respect the grind like I had to respect it, or we just got to be down like that and hope we're going on the same thing. Cause I feel them like that. I feel them how they put me through it. That's how it is. You know. Yes, yeah. you pay now. You can pay. I probably get on the track. You got the bread. Yeah. Nah, man. I I I really respect that, man. You know what? When you, I'm glad you said that because be doing this podcast, man. I reached out to so many people. I was like, you know. You know, it was my fault. I was trying to take shortcuts, like, you know, trying to put, you know, people up like, hey, you know what? I got curved, but I'm so glad that I did this by myself. I don't owe nobody. I got this really? podcast and I built this buzz. I almost got 25,000, you know, people that listen to this podcast by myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I appreciate that hustle, man. And, and you, Ain't nobody man. take that from you. Yeah, yeah, man. Nobody can take that from you. And I appreciate your hustle, man. I, I was looking at your videos and stuff like that. And, you know, it's even better that you did it from the grassroots level. You did it from by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because your shit is clean. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of yes, people sir. can't really do that shit. And they got a whole team with them. You know what I'm talking about? That's real. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're right. God good, though, man. I ain't going to take nothing from him because if he wasn't, I wouldn't even be able to have the opportunity or the chance or anything like that to even better do anything I'm doing. So, you know, I just put it all in his hands, man. And just be, just, 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 just be blessed. And I try to allow myself to be blessed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, plug a couple uh things that you got in the future and then um lastly you gotta drop a jewel. I'm gonna give you a chance and when I say drop a jewel, drop a jewel to, to the youth, man. You know, either some game that somebody gave you or some game that you can give people. That's what's up. Well, I'm gonna drop a jewel to the youth off top then, because that's what's up. To the youth out there, man, number one thing. Stay in school. Don't let nobody tell you different. You feel me? And you can do anything you want to do. You after school, after you finish, it don't take nothing to do from a little bit of homework. Just do that. Get that out of the way. And then you do whatever you want to do. Just just train your brain to go to school and do what you have to do in school to to be successful. And you can do anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so where can we find you at, man? You can find me. Check me out I'm on um, Facebook, Rain Man, the Black Obama, R E R E I G N M A N, the Black Obama. That's my Facebook page. On um, Twitter, you can find me at, at underscore Rain Man underscore. It's like 100,000 followers on Twitter. You can follow me on um, Instagram 
at um, Rain Man underscore official. It's like 25,000 followers on Instagram. You know, Snapchat, Rain Man 007. <laughs> Damn, boy, you fully connected, man. <laughs> I try, man. You know what I'm saying. I'm just trying. Got uh, the hood, the single hood hitter, MP3 wax that um serves it to the DJs, the gold package. So I spent like eight hundred dollars to make sure it should. Everybody should get that song, bro. Yeah. They just, I just had. That's what it's like. Five blasts. I got one. Just went off June 22nd. The next blast. The next email should go out like July 1st. Um. So you know, I'm trying, bro. I, you know that's the major, that's the major, that's a major uh, servicing service. You know, so we'll see. Yeah, man. So where the hoes at, man? I can't go out there. I just had a child, but for anybody listening out there, man, because I I know you're making some club appearances and the thoughts are heavy right now on Rain, man. You know, got the Lambo, so they they. They want to take a ride in the limbo, man. Where are all the hoes going to be at, man? What club are you hitting, man? Where's the events? Well, Gainesville, you're going to hit Club Simon nine times out of ten. And then the you know, first Friday, I'm going to be at the venue at a birthday bash. It's always first Friday at the venue. It's like 1,500 people or so. But this Friday, yeah, I'm, I'm headed to I'm headed to Gainesville. It's going to be epic, epic proportion. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, hey, um, over there at uh Gainesville, man, is there some foot draggers or do you guys got some some real bitches out there, man? Or a mix? Yeah, it's a nice little mix. You know, you got University of Florida, then you got some nice ones in the projects too, you know, it's a mix though, you know. And some people like to keep themselves up, some people don't care, you know, and some people don't give a fuck, you know, it's just what it is. You know, as long as they if you like it, I love it, you feel me? Yeah. In case I travel there, where are the foot draggers and where are the bad thoughts and insta bitches and insta thoughts and all that? The foot draggers and the bad bitches. Two different places. Tell me. Mm, I ain't going to do them like that. So some, of them <laughs> took, some, some, some of them some of them thoughts, my best friends. I ain't even going to say what that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was fighting it with him too, probably for one time. Man, didn't do that. <laughs> okay, so where I, I got, you got to tell me where I got to stay out of the foot draggers. Where the foot draggers at? You stay out of projects. <laughs> 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 mm. All right, man. That probably that that sounds like the best thing I can tell you on that one. <laughs> Yeah, the project. Right. I don't know. You probably might find something nice in the project too. I ain't saying like that. <laughs> man, it's been fun, man. Dog, thank you so much for coming on No Cupcake Zone, man. Hey, he said he finna do Graham. So when you guys do watch, I mean not watch, but uh, listen to this podcast, man. Make sure you share it, man. And plus, you gotta share it on your page too, bro. We finna do some oh, yeah, I got on this one, man. Big oh yeah, show, I got bro. some. <laughs> I got I got groups and all types of stuff with thirty and forty and fifty thousand people. I'll be sharing. All right, man. That's what I like to hear, man. But man, thank you so much again, man. Be easy, bro. For sure, man. And thank you too, man. Shot shot. No cupcakes on. You already know what it is, man. Shout out two three nine three five two. You already know what it is. No cupcake song, man. <laughs> All right, bro. Hey, yes, indeed, man. That was Rain, man. Very fun interview, man. Um, great dude, man. Um, laid back. I thought he was actually gonna be a lot more crunk than what he was you know very down to earth and um man shout out to doug ray man for making this happen man shout out to hirsch bc everybody man holla at your boy podcast gonna be up man holla at your boy (laughs) bust some shots Make sure to tune in next week for our all new episode of the No Cupcake Zone podcast. Don't forget to go to NoCupcakeZone.com to subscribe to this podcast. Check, 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 check. What did you want to finish 
they gon' keep it real today though. Uh, uh, uh. Way past nine, I know that she booty and still a little ratchet. She don't roll the check and I'm about to go catch it. I know I'll be going in when I hit it. I keep on my Nikes and keep on my fitted. Cream of the crop, top of the line. I get my money, all I do is grind. Better some t-shirt and panties you find. Thought in the vision is blowing my mind. If I get the chance, you know I'ma take it. A G in the street, so you know I don't fake it. I probably just beat it, baby. I probably just beat it, baby. And ain't nobody can stop me before that I get down and eat it, baby. I promise this shit on the love. This some good pussy, I feel like a glove. Where she at? I got to go out and find her. She got to be a rider. Me and their babies, they stay by their bread. My bosses, they probably fed. Night just like Vegas. First let me touch you, no be around the bush. I just wanna love you. I'm fishing. These babies is bad, man. They look so official. Pockets on swole. I just want to get a descend. The moment we taking no picture. A night at the beach, we gon' be with the star. Lambo to see to be her in the car. Deep in that poop. Can't nobody fade. Man, she ain't my buffy. Call my little baby. And it ain't about no money. I give her some change. You don't ask me for nothing. She be in the club. You might catch her. I stun. They ain't about no touching. You do that. She fuzz. Find little skirts and booty shorts. Chicks don't wear drawers no more. All in the club on you. Smoking drove in the big booty hole. On the floor on go. Got a feeling they gon' feel it. Gotta put on for the city. Gotta motivate. Niggas but never for the beat. Told you I was near. Would you let me hit it? Don't worry about the mix. You got a cold for the glitches. I go get my baby. We just smoke a ride. If I wanna hit it, I just pull it to the side. If I wanna be the good, I'ma get some loud. And take a right straight to the house. Huh. 